Number 84. What is the effect on the concentration of acetic acid, hydronium ion, and the acetate ion when the following are added to an acidic buffer solution of equal concentrations of acetic acid and sodium acetate? And then we have KCH3CO2. Okay, so basically we're adding potassium acetate to our solution here, right? And in this case, all we care about is what's going to happen to the acetic acid, the hydronium ion, and the acetate ion, right? Now, if you want to know how we got this equation, go back to number 84A. I explain how we got here in that number. So I'm just going to assume that we know how we got this, and then we're just going to dive right in here. So we're adding, it seems, another salt, right? Because I see that this is an ionic compound. It has a metal potassium. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to break that apart. So K, CH3, CO2. The break is between the potassium ion and this ion right here. This one looks should look pretty familiar. We've been seeing this a lot throughout chemistry, right? K plus and CH3, CO2 minus. Now basically, or hopefully, one of these will link up to one here. Now, it was stated a little bit differently, but it basically is the same. CH3CO2 minus, if I grouped all the carbons, all the hydrogens, and all the oxygens together, this is the same thing as saying C2H3O2 minus, which is what I have right here. So in essence, the thing that matches is the acetate ion, which is right over here. Okay. So if we're adding the potassium acetate, we're increasing that. That means that we should be increasing the actual amount of acetate. So this has to increase. So increase all around. We're increasing now the products. Well, this goes back to Le Chatelier's. Remember... For concentration, if you have too much of, of any amount, right, if you increase that amount, you have way too much, you will always shift to the opposite side. So since we're increasing on the product side, the overreaction is going to be always to the opposite side. So in this case, we're going to shift to the reactants. So we already answered one question here. We know that the C2H3... O2 minus concentration, that's the acetate ion, that's going to increase. But now we just have to figure out, well, what's going to happen with the HC2H3O2? That's the acetic acid and the H plus. Well, that just comes from the shift. If we are going and favoring the reactants, that means that the reactant side is going to increase as well. So I know that my acetic acid will have to increase. And then, vice versa, since I'm going to the reactants, the remaining product would have to drop because you added more acetate, which had to react with H+, to make more of this. That's why the hydronium ion is going to be dropping. So here are all of your answers, and that's what's happening with the effect of this one. So hopefully this helped. Thank you so much for viewing the video. Keep uh, on the playlist if you guys are on the playlist because there's a couple more parts here. So I will see you in a little bit and we will answer them. In the meantime, if you could press the subscribe button. Thank you so much for that. I'll see you in a little bit. Bye-bye.